We are in the final days of 2025, a deeply emotional and consequential year for SpaceX and its Starship program. Yet 2026 appears even more promising, as SpaceX advances toward a wide range of ambitious objectives, with the moon standing as the ultimate destination. Yes, SpaceX is planning to land Starship on the moon in 2026. So, how does SpaceX intend to make that goal a reality, and how will this effort influence its other missions? and priorities. Let's explore these questions in today's episode of Great SpaceX. SpaceX is facing a genuine challenge in the race back to the moon as its role in the Artemis 3 mission has effectively become a competition rather than a certainty. This shift is driven by growing skepticism surrounding Starship's development timeline and its readiness to meet NASA's requirements. Many observers believe that Starship may not be prepared in time for 2027 for its crewed lunar landing. Some internal documents and external assessments even suggest that SpaceX may only be capable of launching an uncrewed Starship mission in 2027, with the first crewed mission slipping further to 2028. However, NASA's broader Artemis schedule cannot tolerate additional delays delays. Political pressure, international competition, and long-standing commitments all mean that the agency is under intense scrutiny to deliver a crewed return to the moon within the current decade. If the crewed Artemis 3 mission is to take place in 2027, then SpaceX must demonstrate rapid, visible, and credible progress well before that date. This is precisely why 2026 has become such a critical year for Starship and for SpaceX as a whole. By the end of 2026, SpaceX must achieve a milestone that goes far beyond incremental testing. Starship must reach the moon. More specifically, SpaceX must successfully complete the uncrewed Starship HLS mission, which stands for Human Landing System. And that involves landing a lunar variant of Starship on the moon's surface without astronauts on board. This mission is not optional. It's a contractual requirement and a, and a fundamental proof point for NASA. Without it, a crewed lunar landing using Starship becomes extremely difficult to justify. Fortunately for SpaceX, there's a clear plan in place, although it's ambitious and leaves little room for error. The single most important step in overcoming skepticism about Starship's readiness for lunar missions is the launch of the dedicated Starship HLS prototype. This vehicle must fly between early and mid-2026. That timing is essential because it allows sufficient margin for system checks, subsystem testing, integrated testing, and, critically, time to address problems if something goes wrong. Given the complexity of Starship HLS, issues are not just possible, but likely, and schedule margin will be vital. This HLS prototype flight represents a necessary condition for progress, but it is not sufficient on its own. SpaceX must also meet a series of additional requirements throughout 2026 that collectively demonstrate Starship's operational maturity. These requirements build upon one another and form a tightly linked chain of capabilities that must all be proven in sequence. The first major milestone in this chain is the testing of Starship V3. This testing campaign is expected to take place in the first quarter of the year, meaning within the first three months. The mission associated with this phase is Flight 12, which is widely regarded as one of the most important Starship test flights to date. Flight 12 is intended to validate the extensive upgrades introduced with V3, including improvements to hot staging, grid fins, engine performance, catch hardware, heat shield durability, and the on-orbit re filling system. This mission matters for two fundamental reasons. First, it will reveal whether the V3 design has resolved earlier issues or introduced new ones that require modification. Any problems uncovered during this flight will directly inform design changes and hardware upgrades going forward. Second, the outcome of Flight 12 will heavily influence the entire Starship schedule. A successful flight could accelerate plans for orbital operations and lunar missions later in the year. A problematic flight could force delays and compress already tight timelines. Realistically, Flight 12 could occur as early as late January or early February. The decision to define the first quarter as the target window likely reflects a built-in contingency 
allowing SpaceX some flexibility in case the mission encounters unexpected challenges. This cautious approach suggests that SpaceX understands just how much rides on the success of V3. Following V3 validation, SpaceX must achieve a sequence of increasingly demanding operational goals. The first of these is reaching orbit. While this may sound basic, it's the foundational requirement for any serious space transportation system. Without reliable orbital insertion, Starship cannot support sustained operations, whether these involve satellite deployment, lunar missions, or future Mars expeditions. Reaching orbit is also the prerequisite for building and assembling systems in space, which is central to SpaceX's long-term vision. Once orbital capability is established, the next goal is the deployment of real payloads. Starship has been designed with unprecedented payload capacity, but those numbers only become meaningful once operational payloads are successfully delivered. This is where Starlink plays a critical role. Starship is expected to deploy the first Starlink V3 satellites, which are larger, more powerful, and more capable than previous generations. These satellites are designed to take full advantage of Starship's payload volume and mass capacity. In theory, a single single Starship launch could deploy up to 50 Starlink V3 satellites at once. Payload deployment is not merely a commercial milestone, it's directly relevant to lunar operations. Delivering cargo to orbit is a stepping stone to delivering cargo to the moon. Every successful payload mission strengthens confidence in Starship's ability to transport equipment, supplies, and eventually crew support systems beyond Earth orbit. The next critical capability is recovery and landing. Fully reusable spacecraft are at the heart of SpaceX's strategy. Successfully returning Starship to Earth and landing it safely is essential for achieving rapid launch cadence and cost reduction. More importantly, a successful Earth landing is a prerequisite for lunar landings. The guidance, navigation, propulsion, and structural systems required to land on Earth directly inform the systems needed to land on the Moon. Without demonstrating reliable landings at home, lunar landings remain speculative. Once these baseline capabilities are in place, SpaceX can shift its focus toward one of the most technically challenging aspects of the entire program, which is orbital refilling. For Starship to reach the moon with sufficient payload and margin, it must be refueled in orbit. This requires a complex choreography of launches, rendezvous operations, fluid transfer, and system reliability across multiple vehicles. Orbital refilling is not a single event, but a long-term development effort. Initial tests are expected to begin around mid-year, potentially involving two Starship vehicles demonstrating the ability to rendezvous and connect in orbit. These early tests will focus on proving the mechanical and fluid interfaces. Subsequent tests will aim to validate repeatability and reliability, which are essential when dozens of refilling flights may be required to support a single lunar mission. In parallel, SpaceX may also pursue the development of a dedicated orbital propellant depot, which would centralize refueling operations and reduce mission complexity. SpaceX has already reported meaningful progress in this area. The company has completed a depot power module demonstration, testing prototype electrical power generation and distribution systems intended for the propellant depot variant of Starship. Additionally, SpaceX has activated a hardware in the loop testbed for the propellant transfer flight test. This test bed uses flight representative hardware to simulate real mission conditions and refine procedures ahead of actual orbital demonstrations. While flight testing progresses, significant work is also underway on the ground. Launch infrastructure must expand to support higher flight rates and more complex mission profiles. At Starbase, Pad 2 is nearing readiness to support V3 operations. However, to enable frequent launches and two-stage landing operations, Pad 1 must also be upgraded. Ideally, Pad 1 would return to service in the second half of 2026, enabling sustained refilling missions. Beyond Starbase, SpaceX is upgrading Launch Complex 39A in Florida to increase launch cadence and operational flexibility. At the same time, work is progressing on SLC-37, which is expected to become operational by 2027. Together, these facilities will form a geographically distributed launch network capable of supporting Starship's ambitious goals. 
Production capacity is another crucial piece of the puzzle. SpaceX intends to push its manufacturing systems to unprecedented levels. The Star Factory is expected to reach full operational capacity in 2026, effectively becoming the world's first mass production facility for orbital class rockets. This capability is essential for supporting high launch rates and rapid iteration. Complementing Star Factory are the stacking facilities. The new Gigabay is currently under construction and is expected to become operational around the second quarter of the year. Combined with the two existing Megabays, this infrastructure will allow SpaceX to assemble multiple Starship vehicles in parallel, dramatically increasing throughput. Between production and launch lies the testing system, which has proven to be a bottleneck in the past. Issues encountered with the vehicles, such as Ship 39 and B-18, highlighted weaknesses in test flow and infrastructure. However, these challenges have driven substantial upgrades throughout the year. In 2026, testing facilities are expected to undergo further expansion and modernization with the goal of achieving reliability suitable for operational flights at scale. All of these preparations point toward a single overarching objective, which is the moon. Starship's lunar ambitions represent one of the most scrutinized and contested efforts in modern spaceflight. Skepticism remains high, but completing these milestones and accelerating progress would dramatically improve the likelihood of a successful uncrewed Starship HLS landing before the end of the year. What SpaceX delivers in 2026 will directly shape the future of Artemis and the global space race. Starship's pace has long been questioned, and those doubts intensified when NASA introduced competition for the Artemis III lander. The message was clear. Progress must be proven, not promised. A successful uncrewed Starship landing on the moon would be the clearest possible response, reinforcing SpaceX's role and restoring confidence in the Artemis architecture. Hitting those milestones in 2026 also protects the 2027 timeline. It would allow the U.S. to sustain momentum toward a long-term lunar presence ahead of rivals, particularly China. Early success buys time to choose landing sites, build infrastructure, conduct extended research and gain operational experience. That groundwork, not a single symbolic landing, defines real leadership on the moon. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.